Welcome to the Financial Quarterback with your host, Jim Lineweaver. Hi, I'm Jim Lineweaver, your financial quarterback since 1993. Many people, especially high net worth families, are concerned about increasing taxes in the future. President Biden has expressed an interest in and campaigned on lowering estate planning exemptions, as well as possibly increasing the tax rate. And other lawmakers have also proposed their own wealth taxes. That makes 2021 a prime year to prepare for the future. Here to talk us through some estate planning strategies is attorney Matt Hostetler. Thanks, Jim. While the Democrats control the Congress and have campaigned on increasing estate taxes for the wealthy, what most people forget is that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act passed under the Trump administration sunsets many of the current tax provisions we're using now. For example, the current estate planning exemption is $11.7 million and will sunset to $5 million index for inflation in 2026. So while we don't know what the future holds, if a lot of that exemption goes away in the future, it makes sense to accelerate your planning now. So the low hanging fruit is basically gifting the enhanced gift exemption. Depending on the Biden administration, 2021 may be the last year that clients enjoy the enhanced exemption amount that exceeds 11 million. Because in the best case scenario, at least half the exemption will disappear at the end of 2025. So clients can give away millions of dollars in 2021 that would otherwise be subject to a 40% tax in 2026. So if possible, people should gift assets that are likely to appreciate in value. These gifted assets would then already be free of estate tax and can likely continue to grow tax-free in the future. The downside of gifting is that the trust's tax basis is the same as the client's basis. So if a person inherits an asset as a result of a client's death, the beneficiary's basis will be the fair market value of the asset when the client died. While gifting can avoid estate taxes, it could result in higher capital gains taxes. This is usually a good result though, since the top capital gains rate is 20%, which is about half of the estate tax rate of 40%. And that's a valid strategy for the people that want to take advantage of it, but I have come across people that resist gifting because they don't want to give up control of the assets. And so for those folks, we use an alternate strategy using a certain kind of trust called a Spousal Lifetime Access Trust, or SLAT, which permits clients to make a gift to their spouse. So the spouse can be a beneficiary of the trust for life, and the client, by virtue of marriage to the spouse, can indirectly enjoy the benefits of that trust. That might be more appealing to people who want to retain some control, but are there any drawbacks people should keep in mind when considering the strategy? There are a couple. First, if the spouse dies, the trust will pass to the remainder beneficiaries, which are usually children, and not return to the client. So the client must have their own funds available in case he survives the spouse. Second, if both spouses create slats for each other to protect against the survivor having limited funds when the first spouse dies, the IRS might nullify the gifts if the trusts are too similar. Well, thanks, Matt. That's great information. So if you have any questions about how you can use either of these strategies as part of your wealth planning, give us a call. Here's Chris Wallace.